In this video, we'll start with a list of unique items. Then we'll select randomly from that list without selecting any duplicates. While this may sound easy, the solution is a little more complex than you might imagine. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. Here's our problem. We've got a list of 52 playing cards over here, and I want to deal a hand of five to each of these four poker players over here. The problem lies in that once I deal any particular card, I cannot deal that card again. Simply randomly picking from this 52 card deck and dealing to the players is not going to be enough because I'll end up with duplicates like you see the Queen of Spades duplicated here. Before we go any further, I'd like to issue two disclaimers. First, I've chosen a list of 52 playing cards here, but these could be a list of anything. It could be a list of 1,000 unique inventory items. It could be words, it could be numbers. And the second thing I want to disclaim is that these symbols are just that. They're symbols. If you go to Insert, Symbols, select Arial Font, then scroll down to Miscellaneous Symbols, you can see those right here, and I've simply colored the heart and the diamond red. So treat those symbols as if they were text, and in fact, these cells have a general format assigned to them. The first thing I'm going to do in solving this problem is to make my list vertical. There's no particular order required, but that's the first step. The second step is going to be to assign a random number using that formula to each cell directly beside your list. And I'm going to take this out to as many decimal places as I can, which is usually 16, and then copy that down. These random numbers are all between 0 and 1. They'll recompute every time you hit the F9 key. And they're all 16 decimal places. Now most of these end in 0, and that seems to be a function of the 16 digits, but there's a few probably here's one that ends in a digit other than zero. So some of them actually do go out to 16 digits. Here's another one. So these random numbers are very likely in a list of only 52 to be all unique. And that's the important thing we're going after. We need a unique tag to assign to each of our items on our list. Now there is a remote possibility, it's very low odds, but it could happen that the random number generator generates the same number in two of our cells. We'll talk about that contingency later. We have a plan to deal with that. Now before we get any further into how we're going to do this, I'm going to make it a little easier on myself for the formula writing, and I'm going to rename this range, which is column A, my list, and I'm just going to call it data with a capital D. That way I can refer to those cells as data in formulas. Otherwise I would be referring to them as A1 colon A52 multiple times in formulas. Now to solve this problem we're going to nest a rank function within an index function. So let's quickly take a look at the rank function. The rank function returns the order of an item in a list of items. So I have the, the numbers 1 through 5 listed here in jumbled order. If I were to say rank, it's going to ask for the number, the reference list, and the order. Descending is the default, ascending is the one you can choose at your option. Let's choose ascending, put that in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit the F4 key here to make these absolute. 
and you'll see that returns three. So actually, whether it's ascending or descending, three is going to be in the middle, and that, that'll be number three. So if I change this to zero, it'll still be three. But if I go down here, again, this is descending order now. So if you're descending from five to one, two is the fourth, and so on down the line. That's what the rank function does. In the context of our problem, we're going to use the rank function to rank these 16-digit random numbers from 1 to 52. So the rank function will return a number between 1 and 52. The index function, as a quick review, is equally simple. If I were to type index here, it's going to ask for an array, and I'm just going to randomly select these eight cells. And it's going to ask for a row number. Let's go with 2. And a column number. Let's go with 1. So that returns whatever is in row 2, column 1, which is this item here. So that's how the index function works. We're going to nest a rank function within our index function to define the row and the row is based on a random number. That's how our selection is going to work. To make the formulas a little easier, I'm going to rename this range of cells in column B, and we'll just call that random. That'll make the formula writing a little bit easier. So let's get on with dealing the first card to the first player index. The array I'm going to report back from the index function is this one in column A, and remember we called that data. The row number will be defined entirely by a nested rank function. The rank function number for each of these cards dealt has got to be unique, but it doesn't really matter where it is on our list of 52 rows. So I'm going to start with this cell right here, B1. Our reference cells, remember we called that random. And the order doesn't really matter as long as you stick with the same order for all of these cards. I'd like to think in ascending, so I'm going to pick ascending order, and we'll close off our row. Now for the column, it's going to be column number one, because the index function is only really looking at column one. It's just being given a row defined by the random numbers, if that makes sense. So there's my first card, and I'm just going to copy this format over to clean that up a little bit. Now, for these other cells, you can paste this down. But for these coming over here, we're going to have to change one thing. And that thing we're going to have to change is this. We're going to have to go from B5 to B6 here. Just because of the way I've got this arranged. And let me go ahead and fix all these make them B7 and so forth. B8. I'm going to continue on all the way around the horn until I'm done here. There's one other minor thing I need to do to format these correctly. My hearts and my diamonds need to be red. So I'm going to set a conditional format. Let's go ahead and copy our heart and I'm going to highlight all of these cells. We'll set a conditional format. We're going to format cells that contain a specific text containing a heart. And we'll make those red. So now it appears my hearts are taken care of. I'm going to repeat that for the diamonds. So now my random cards are being drawn and there's no duplicates, but there is that extremely remote chance, and I mean this chance is smaller than the chance of you winning the Mega Millions lottery, but there is a remote chance that two of these 16 digit random numbers could come up the same and we don't have a contingency to deal with that. 
I'm going to flag it. That's going to be my solution. I'll put a warning here that says invalid deal duplicates found. So the way we're going to do that is with the COUNTIF function. My range of data is going to be random. And I'm going to look for this number. So that comes up one because this number appears only once in this range in column B. If it were to appear more than once, then you would get a two here. So let's autofill that down, go down to the bottom, and sum that. So that sum right there should always be 52. If that is anything but 52, that means we must have a duplicate. So I'm just going to come over here and do an if statement. If cell C53 is not equal to 52, then say invalid duplicates. Otherwise, say nothing. Now to prove that this works, I'm going to come up here and do a little trick with a couple of these. We'll round this up to random and only one decimal place. So that's a 0.3 and I'll copy that down for a few of these cells. So now we've got some duplicates. We've got two sevens here and we've got uh, two ones, point ones rather, point sevens and point ones. So my warning came up right away, letting me know that I need to redeal, redeal, redeal. There's one with no duplicates because we've got all ones here. So that's how that works. And I'm going to put those back the way they were. And we're ready to go. If anyone has a better solution to the problem of picking randoms from a list with no duplicates, please let me know in the comments section. I'd be very interested in hearing your solutions to this problem. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and informative. Please consider hitting my subscribe button. I'll be doing a new video every week as I have been for almost a year now. Thank you for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.